ice path for beginners. So what is spice path? Spice path is a combination of two words, Python and Spark. Both are programming languages that are used to write code. To start with, I want you to remember just two concepts. One is compute, the other is storage. Whenever I'll say compute, you should think about data processing, data calculation, data manipulation, data transformation, data evaluation, data determination. Basically, anything that has to do with data, think about compute. And wherever you hear a word storage, the data repository should come into your mind. So these two concepts you should keep in mind always. For compute, we will use PySpark and for storage, we will use disk. Traditionally, with all the databases in the market, like Teradata, Oracle, SQL Server, Postgres, compute and storage, both were tightly coupled into the same hardware. So you will get a big heavy server, 50 kilograms of a big server, which will have compute, like processing units to do the computation part. And those servers will also have storage in form of disk. In traditional databases, we use SQL, like we write SQL queries for compute purpose, and we use disk in those servers for storage purpose. When big data came into the picture, they said that you don't need dedicated hardwares to run your compute and storage. They also make sure that you can use commodity hardwares to run compute and you can use commodity hardwares for storage purpose as well. And both the compute and storage does not need to be tightly coupled with each other. So a different machine for compute and a different machine for storage is also possible. Some of the examples were, you can write a MapReduce program using Java for compute purpose. You can run Hive query language or HQuery using Hive. Or you can use Spark that provides different API like Kala, Python, SQL. As part of this video, we'll focus on the Python API for Spark. And that's why the name PySpark. And for storage, there were different formats available. You can use Hadoop distribution file system. You can use Databricks file system. You can use Amazon S3 simple storage service. So with big data, there is a flexibility that you can choose your own compute and you can choose your own storage and you can merge them together. Most of the compute and storage are compatible with each other, but then there is an option. You can hand pick what kind of compute you want, what kind of storage you want. Like you can run Hive queries on top of data that resides in S3. Similarly, you can run PySpark application on top of data that resides in Databricks DBFS. So as part of this video, we'll look into Databricks DBFS. Before I proceed, I want you to understand some more concepts. It's a very generic concepts. Say you have a file, a very big, huge file, lots of data in it. Then you will have small, small, small processing units. All these processing units will take a portion of that file, will do the processing, and will output a small file. So here I want to introduce two new concepts along with compute and storage, that is parallelism and distribution. We have a big, huge file, and you want to process data present in this file. You will have small compute units. These compute units will process a portion of that file rather than the entire file in one go. So each small processing unit is processing only a portion of the file and whatever data transformation you want, it will apply on that particular small portion of data and will generate the output. So here in this case, I have four processing units. I will divide a big file into four smaller chunks. Each chunk will be processed by each processing unit and each processing unit will generate a output file. So from one big file, now I have four small files as an output. All this is done in parallel. So all the processing units are processing in parallel and output is also generated in parallel. The data is distributed. So what I want you to do now is, along with compute and storage, I want you to remember these two terms as well, parallelism and distribution. So compute, storage, parallelism, distribution. Just remember these four words 
throughout your PySpark journey and I'm pretty sure this will make things much easy for you. Now, I don't believe in a typical way of teaching where we do a lot of type D, lot of theoretical knowledge and then we go into the practical and at that moment you are already overwhelmed by all the theoretical concepts. So I want to relate theoretical concepts immediately with some practical components as well. So what I want you to do is just remember these four concepts right now. This should always be in your mind. What is compute? What is storage? What is parallelism? What is distribution? And then we'll start with hands-on and gradually we'll continue to add more and more concepts on top. So what I want you to do is log in into Databricks community. I'll show you how you can create an account and this will give you a space where you can run your PySpark code. Obviously, you can use Google Collab also. You can have a Docker image for PySpark as well. But as part of this tutorial, we'll use Databricks Community Edition. There's nothing to install on your system. So even with a low configuration laptop, you can work. You can access it from anywhere and it's free. So let me show you how you can create an account in Databricks Community. And we'll write our first PySpark application on it. Once you click on the link in the description box below, it will bring you to this web page. If you already have a Databricks Community Edition login, you don't have to do any sign up. You can go ahead and sign in into the account. But if you are here for the first time, I want you to click here on the sign up link. This will open a new tab. Fill in the details below. Company, you can give any company whatever you want. Phone number is optional, so I'll not give it. Select your country. And by submitting, I agree. Click on continue. Professional uses this. Now you don't have to select any of these options. If you look here at bottom, personal use, community edition is a limited single load version of Databricks for personal educational use. Get started with community edition. Please click on this button. So now you will get an email with the verification link. Just click on that link. And once you click on that link, it will ask you to set up a password. So very first time, it will ask you to set up a password. All right. So I have done the setup. Now let me try login into it. Once you log in into the Databricks Community Edition, this is a screen which you will see. It may change over the time, but right now, it, when I'm recording this video, it looks something like this. First thing I want you to do here is click on compute. Now what we have to do here is we have to set up a machine and that machine we'll use to run our PySpark applications. So click on create compute. Give it a name. I will call it as PySpark1. You can select your runtime. Let me select runtime 14 and click on create compute. Now this may take two, three minutes. Once this compute machine is up, we'll create a notebook and we'll attach a notebook to this compute machine. So I'll pause the video now. And once this machine is up, we'll proceed with the next step. Took around five minutes for this compute machine to come up and I can see it is active now. Cluster is running. The next step I want you to do is click on workspace, create and we'll create a notebook now. And I will give name as PySpark001. I'll keep the language as Python. It allows you to pick from Python, SQL, Scala or R. This is a PySpark tutorial so we'll keep the language as Python for our code. You can see the notebook is already attached to the cluster which we just now created. If there are multiple clusters, you can detach and attach it to a different cluster also. We don't have to do any changes here. And let me type the word famous code now. Hello world. Welcome to PySpark tutorial. And run. So you see, my code is working. So all I have done is I've created a compute cluster. 
have created a notebook in workspace and I have attached my notebook to cluster now and I'm able to run a code, a Python code in it. So you have your environment ready for running your PySpark applications. Also a word of caution here, the compute cluster which you created, if you don't use it for say one hour, it will be automatically terminated. Even if your cluster is terminated, your notebooks will not go, go away. You will still have your notebooks, you will still have your data in DVFS. You just have to connect it to a different cluster to run it. And you can create another once this compute cluster is terminated automatically because of idle time. You can create a new cluster and then attach your notebooks and run. So you will not lose any code. It's just that since it's a community edition and if you are not using the cluster, it is terminated. So let's move to the next step of creating your very first PySpark application. Before we build our first PySpark application, I want you to understand a few more concepts. In the existing list of concepts which I have mentioned before, that is compute, anything that has to do with data manipulation, storage, which is basically a data repository, parallelism, dividing a big task into a smaller task and each smaller processor units are working on it in parallel and then generating a output in a distributed manner stored in a distributed file system. So you are already aware about compute, storage, parallelism and distribution. I want to add two more concepts to this list, which is data frame and parquet. So data frame and parquet, what is data frame? If database has table, Spark has data frame. So if you have somebody who was moving from a database background to a Spark, data frame will be your best friend. Data frame has rows columns and schema information. So it is somewhat equivalent to what you have tables in any database environment. Parquet is a data file format. So it's columnar, it's compressed, and it also stores schema information. So because it is columnar and compressed, it is highly efficient while using Parquet format to compute the data. And since it is compressed, the I.O. is also very efficient. I'll not do a dive deep into columnar and compressed. I assume that you already know about these topics. If not, you can Google and read about it. But at a high level, columnar basically means that the data is stored in a column format, not in the row format. So when you are reading a data, instead of reading the entire line, you can handpick which column you want to read for the output. By compressing the data, it reduces I.O. significantly. So say you have a 2 MB data block and you can accommodate 100 rows in it. But since you apply compression on those 100 rows and you reduce the size to 50%. So now what will happen in the same 2 MB data block, first you were able to accommodate 100 rows. Now the size is reduced by 50%. You will be able to accommodate 200 rows. So in any Spark environment, Data frame along with the parquet file format is a very strong combination. Most of the recent advancements we have seen, like Apache Hoodie and other formats, those also use parquet at the backend. So if you are clear with this concept, here is your updated concept list. You should keep compute, storage, parallelism, distribution, data frame, parquet in your mind while writing Spice Park applications. During this tutorial, I'll continue to add more and more concepts as and when we need it. I'm not trying to push all the concepts in one go so that you don't get overwhelmed. If these concepts are clear, let's proceed and write our first PySpark application.